What is up people and welcome back to another one of my Unity game development series. I'm sorry that I did not put some of these out in such a long time. The reason for it is because, well, did not have the time, was working on some projects, so on and so forth. But now we are here and I'm gonna hit run so that we can see what is the game that we are about to create. So this is a simple main menu with a single button and I can hit play here. And now we can you know, use our Santa to jump. So notice now, every time we land on a platform, we are gonna move the camera and the platform is gonna move along with the player. If however, we miss the platform, we go here, we are gonna die, the game is gonna stop, the score is three. And we can either restart the game or go to main menu, hit play again, and voila! Just like that, magic is happening. The true magic does exist. So if I fall, up, fall down again and lose, I can click on restart. And here we are again with our Santa jumper. So notice this here. Notice there are so many features that we can learn here. Or we are about to learn is notice how we can go from down so we go from down the collider does not stop us so we go from down but we land on top so that's one of the features other features is well the mechanics this is not even though the game seems very simple well to create it it's not that simple so notice now let me try to fall down again and voila we are dead so ignore the error here that we are getting can us cannot initialize property game performance blah 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 i don't care about this because i have enabled some things or disabled some things in unity editor that's why we have these well errors anyway the game is called sand jumper and as you can see it's very simple you just jump from one platform to another platform the platforms are generated automatically the player can die we have score and so on and so forth so let's get into it and create this cool game so let's begin all right now so first things first here we have a new project which i've created by well simply going here let me just go new project when you first open unity this is what you will see right here this window here you have well the new project when you click on this tab if you want to open an old one you can go here click on open and search for it then you will open it under a new project this is what you will see so here you can have that project name. All this will be our project name. I named mine Santa Jumper. Here we have this circle for 3D and 2D. Well, this is self-explanatory. If you're making a 3D game, you're gonna circle 3D. If you're making a 2D one, then circle 2D. In our case, it is 2D. For the location, well, here you are gonna search where you are gonna store the project in the folder on your computer. So nothing complicating, nothing difficult. And Unity Analytics, if you click on this question mark, it says by enabling Unity Analytics, project data will be collected to provide you project matrix, benchmarks against similar projects and insights into players' behavior, player behavior. No additional SDK integrations are required to get started. So I got it, but I have turned it off because this is just a tutorial. This is not a project for deployment into the real world, only a tutorial. So I don't need this, but I do recommend that you can, well, enable this. So click it on on if you want to create a project that you want to deploy on the app store, because it will give you some valuable information for your project. After you are done, you're simply going to click here, create project that will create it for you. And this is what you will see afterwards. Voila. Now, before I import the assets, what I want to talk about, and this is something interesting that a lot of people ask me and they still do. And this is just something people don't get to grasp on their own. They cannot find it or I don't know, but you see this camera. So I have the camera here and notice this is a landscape mode camera. And uh, if I go here in the game tab, we see that the resolution is 1280 by 720. Now, if you want to change that resolution, you're gonna click here. So notice right here where I'm pointing with my mouse and here you're gonna click. So you have three aspect resolutions. You have here resolutions that you can choose Clicking on the plus button, you can add your own custom resolution. So if I edit this one, I am gonna say 
1280 by 720 resolution. I'm going to click OK. And now the name of this resolution is 1280 by 720. Now going back, if I click on the plus button, I can have here a custom resolution so we can label it, which is the name of the resolution. So if I say here 12 and excuse me for this, instead of clicking two, one, I clicked on F1 to reduce my light. So if I say here 1920, so 1920 by 1080, this will be that resolution. And if I say here fixed resolution, that means that I can specify the width and the height. So if I say here 1920 by 1080 and click OK, now I have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, which is full HD resolution. And you can change, you can simply click here and you can select whichever resolution you want. And that will be the one the camera will adjust automatically to that resolution. So the camera will automatically adjust itself to that resolution. Now, why I did this? Well, because I see people asking me, hey, dude, your camera is like this. It's in portrait mode. How can I make it in landscape mode like you did in the video? Well, this is how you are going to do it. So you're going to go here and you're going to, well, select a resolution that you want. If you don't have the resolution that you want to select, then click on the plus button and simply create that resolution for yourself. Now, also one thing that I want to do here is notice the rectangle that represents the camera because I have selected the camera here in the hierarchy panel. Now, the camera has its size, which is right here in the inspector panel under camera. And here we have the size. Notice here the size and I can resize it. Notice if I resize it, the camera gets smaller and larger and blah, 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 whatnot. Well, the default size is five. So you can resize it, for example, to four, you can resize it to three, so on and so forth. But you can play with the size if you have to. This is also one of the things people ask me, hey, the camera is like this or like that. Well, this is how you fix those issues. So enough about that. What we want to do now is, and what I like to do always, is import my assets and organize the project. So I'm gonna right click here where it says assets. I'm gonna create a new folder and this is gonna be my assets folder. I'm also gonna right click one more time and go under create and go under folder and this is gonna be my scenes folder. And now while I'm in the current scene, which is this one right here, I can hold command and press S on Windows. It's probably control S or you can go under file and you can save scene right here. And this is going to be my gameplay scene or simply I'm going to name it gameplay and I'm going to save it where into assets and scenes and I am going to hit save and voila, this is our scene now. And for the assets, I'm simply going to drag all of these assets. So I'm simply going to drag them right here. And well, for the assets, what we are going to do is I'm going to select all of them. And I am going to, well, overwrite for PC Mac Linux stand alone. Or you can, well, select them, just click here, apply. Or you can, well, select here for Android, overwrite for Android, blah, 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 for what you want to create a game. But the way we are going to create a game, it will work for uh, revert. So the way we are going to create a game will work for Android and it will also work for PC because we are going to use a button to jump and everything else will be the same for computers or desktop and for PCs. Now the size of my background is, let me see, 510 by 850. So I'm going to select here 1024 instead of compressed. I'm going to set true color for the format and I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to do the same thing for BG2. So 1024 compressed is going to be or format is going to be true color. I'm going to hit apply. True color is the best choice that you give you the best visibility of your graphics, but it will take more memory. And the memory that you see here in the bottom right corner is the memory that's going to be taken. But notice or drill it in your mind that this memory right here is not storage memory. So this background right here is not going to take 1.7 megabytes in your storage. It's going to take 1.7 megabytes of your RAM or graphics RAM where Unity stores, well, that memory. 
And for the buttons, let me just see. I'm also gonna select here 1024, true color. I'm gonna hit apply. For the player, I am gonna select here. Let me just go 1024. It's gonna be true color. I'm gonna hit apply. And uh, we are also gonna go here in the inspector panel for the sprite mode. We have multiple, which I'm gonna select for the player. I'm gonna hit apply and go in the sprite editor and I'm gonna slice everything that we have here. So this is our player one, two, three, four. Let's say here, player idle. And this is gonna be player jump. And this is gonna be player jump one. This is gonna be player jump two. And this is gonna be player jump three. And this right here is the platform. So here I'm gonna say platform and I am gonna hit apply so that it save these changes. And we are gonna do the same thing for the buttons. So change it sprite mode, which is right here, from, sing from single to multiple. And what this actually means is, notice that these buttons or these buttons are actually three buttons in one image. This is called, well, a sprite image, or this is a sprite. So what we wanna do here is we want to have access to each individual button in our game or in this image. So in order to do so, what we need to do is slice them up because this is a way to store or to save memory because if we have imported these images, so if we have imported these images, every single one in a separate file, so this button will be on one image, this on the second, this on the third, that will be three different images which when they afterwards render, it will have three different images on the screen. But if we import them all as one image and slice them up and use them in our game, then Unity will, de will detect them as a single image, even though we are actually using three different ones because they are all grouped in this sprite sheet right here. So in the sprite sheet right here, they are grouped. So if I click on slice, here is my play button. So play button and this is restart. So restart button and we can use this for a button and for a panel. So let me just go here. What am I doing? So I'm gonna call this simply panel, but we can use it as a background for a button also. Now notice one thing, when we go here slice and we click on slice, Unity's automatic slice works pretty damn good, but if sometimes you have some problems, so for example, if I go here, we see that this button is not 100% sliced how we want it to be. Notice this right here. So let me just go, what am I doing? I'm moving, I am actually moving and slicing new buttons. What am I doing? Yeah, I need to drag it with the middle mouse. So. If we go here, notice when I zoom in, notice where this blue line is, which is slicing our button. It's a little bit above the button. So how can we, and why am I constantly trying to move this with, well, the left mouse button. Anyway, how can we, well, slice it exactly on the button? Well, we can simply take it and we can position it downwards a little bit and it will be exactly now on the button. The same way for the down one. So here we can move it up and down and I'm gonna move it right here so it will be exactly on the mouse button. Do we need to do that from the side? Yes, we do. So here on the right one and here lastly on the left one. So this is how we can, well, slice everything. So this is how we can slice this is the panel, this is restart button, and this is the play button. So what I just showed you is in case that Unity's automatic slice does not work how you want, and I'm gonna click apply here. For example, it has sliced this button, but the slice is like this. Well, you want to place it back, so you're gonna put it right here, and this is how you are gonna do it. So simply as that. Just click, drag in where you want it to be, just release it, and that is that. So this is it for this video, an introduction video for the game, and explain some concepts that for some reason a lot of people are asking me. They cannot seem to figure out out on their own, but hey, if you cannot find it, if you do not know how you can do it, then you can look at this video and have a reference for it. That is for the resolution. If you don't know how to change it, well, this is how you can change it. Clicking on the plus button, you can add your own resolution. 
and so on and so forth. I don't want to explain it once more. Now, one other thing that we can do for all of these textures, which is something that I just noticed, we can uncheck this generate MIP maps. This generate MIP maps, uncheck it. The reason for it, because generate MIP maps is only used for, well, 3D. We don't want it in our 2D game, so generate MIP maps is unchecked. So as I said, this was for the first video and in the next one, we're going to start building our game. The game is going to be in portrait mode. So you can select 480 by 800 if you don't have it created here on the plus sign. And as I said, in the next video, we are going to start creating our games and our game mechanic. So see you then.